So you remember last time, I managed to prank the Corniche into a low ballard in a supermarket car park, which not only ruined my recently re bumpers, but also resulted in what looked like a crease in the rear wing from the impact. The rear panel behind the bumper was also crushed and needed tempting back into shape before I prepped it for paint. So while it was apart, I decided to resume some excellent suspension work that was long overdue. The hubs were removed and new bearings were fitted, but one of them proved a bit difficult resulting in me completely stripping the thread on the stub axle. I promptly ordered a new one from Intracar and it was reconstructed and fitted along with the refurbished brake calipers. So it's in with the Woodruff key. On with the yoke. <sighs> Ever feel like you've been here before? Now, I know you've all been waiting on an update episode on the Porsche GT, but as we've had rain for what seems like the last 40 days and 40 nights, rather than me give you lots of busy episodes, I've decided that I'll do a full episode where the car is finally painted and that cam belt address too. And although I've been jumping on and off it doing bits and bobs, I've also been busy getting my house in order in the form of a new MIG welder from Artec to join the TIG that I purchased a couple of weeks ago. I've also purchased some argon, pure argon, and an argon mix, so I can hit the ground running when we eventually do get some more settled weather. All the joys of working outside amongst the elements. These old UJs look like they've been with the car since new. You know, when these are worn, they'll cause vibration, but as you know, these Rolls Royces can still drive like new, giving you no indication parts are worn until the wheel falls off. So it's always best to check things through and replace as needs, just to be on the safe side and give you peace of mind. The UJ itself is actually held in each end by two circlips. But take care when you remove the short axle. As at the other end, where it meets the differential, there's a million small steel needles. You drop these, you'll be on your hands and knees all day looking for them. So I improvise with a simple rubber glove over the end, which just holds everything in place while you work on it.
As I said before, this part's probably been on the car for 50 odd years. So just take your time, free it up, and then eventually push it out with a press so you can get the cap off at one end, and then eventually you can waggle the whole UJ out. And you'll notice I'm using a large socket at the bottom so the UJ can pass through, and a smaller socket at the top to press it through. And now it has to be pressed the other way, so we can get the other end cap off. First impression, it doesn't look too bad. But then on closer inspection, see them little score marks off the needles? This is well worn. Make sure it's nice and clean and the grooves cleaned out to take the new circlip. And if there's any raised bits, just carefully file them out so that the end cap can slide in smoothly. Now inside here, see inside there, see all them little needles, they're like, these are filled with grease through your nipple here, and they act like a kind of bearing, this is the old one, look how dirty and filthy that is, and these are like the little needles, see, tiny little needles that just go all the way, all the way around, so you've got to be very careful if you're tapping these on, when you're fitting them to the short axle, just be careful that they all stay in situ because if they come away, you'll never compress your your cap end, your end cap, whatever, and um, you're into all kind of problems. So just be very careful and make sure the, you know, it's slid on carefully all the way like this, and then you tap it on carefully. And these are carefully designed to be a nice, tight machine fit. Now it's up to you which method you use. You can tap them in like I did. Or if you don't have a press, you can use a vise and do it that way. Or if you have a press, just press them in. You'll work it out. Make sure the UJ moves nice and freely. That's good enough for me.
Slippery little sucker. Now when the short axle's back on, just open up this little filler cap and like a contortionist, just spray in maybe 20 or 30 squirts of EP90. I think this is lubricated from the diff itself. I think there's a hole that goes through to it, but just keep it well lubricated. It's also an idea when you service the car, just to go around all the little grease nipples and all the little lubrication holes and just make sure everything's got a few little squirts in just to keep things well lubricated, as I say. And of course, when that's all back together, don't forget to grease up the UJs. A good indication is when the grease comes out of the rubber seals. So, let's come back to this little bit of damage we did. Remember I bumped the bumper at the back in a, in a supermarket car park? Um, there didn't seem to be any damage apart from the bumper and then when I looked closely the next day, I saw this little crease here, and there's a tiny one, just down here under where the bumper is, a little scuff of paint. Um, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this was just a skim of filler from a previous paint job. Uh, as you know, most body shops just put a, a, a light skim of filler, guide coat it, block it out. And that's the only way, really, of getting an absolutely perfect paint job, unless you're using new panels from start to finish, of course. So I'll give this a little bit of further investigation now, and let's see where we're at, eh? What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a Stanley knife, I'm going to carefully cut around it and just buzz away what's underneath and just see what we've got. Now everything seems nice and flat under there, but just to be on the safe side, I'm just going to tap it in a little bit with the screwdriver, just to make sure. And now comes the Deros to dull off the whole panel so the paint and the lacquer adheres to it.
Then after the paint and the clear coat were carefully applied, I had to down tools. I gave the jag a quick clean, checked the fluids, as I was off to honour a very important prior engagement. And speaking of honour, I was extremely honoured when the show's organiser, Andrea Seed, gave the jag prior the place next to Mike Brewer's beloved camper van on the Wheeler Dealer stand. The most prestigious event on the British calendar for petrol heads, the Classic Motor Show in Birmingham. So, I've just arrived at the NEC. Um, what a show we've got in store here, look at this. And there we are, we're in the XJS. It's got pride of place on the wheel of dealer stand, next to my caravanette. Excited, three days. Uh, give me a little idea of what's in store. I mean, just look at that. And the seven holes this year. It's going to be phenomenal. Really excited, guys. Come on down. Might see you here. Thank you for watching this episode of Classic Obsession. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe. And see you all next time.